Consider a function f of two variables, x and y, subject to the constraint g equals 0, where g is another function of x and y. We can construct a new function of three variables, called the Lagrangian expression, where l equals f plus lambda times g. If a, b is a critical point of f, subject to the constraint g equals 0, then there exists a lambda, say lambda naught, such that a, b, lambda naught, is a critical point of l. The converse is also true. That is, if a, b, lambda naught, is a critical point of l, then a, b, is a critical point of f, subject to the constraint g equals 0. The method of Lagrange multipliers allows us to obtain critical points of l, which helps us maximize or minimize the function f. The number lambda naught in the previous slide is called the Lagrange multiplier. Setting the partial derivatives of L equal to zero yield three equations that represent the necessary conditions of an interior maximum or minimum. To find the critical points of L, we solve the system of equations. Consider the Cobb-Douglas utility function u of x, y, which equals to x to the power of alpha times y to the power of beta where x and y are the quantities of each of the two goods that might be consumed in a period. Here, alpha and beta are positive constants such that alpha plus beta equals to 1. Suppose that utility is subject to the following budget constraint. Income equals to the price of good x times x plus the price of good y times y. Our goal is to maximize utility. Using the method of Lagrange multipliers, we see that f equals to x to the power of alpha times y to the power of beta, and g equals to income minus the price of x times x minus the price of y times y. So the Lagrangian expression is x to the power of alpha times y to the power of beta plus lambda times income minus the price of x times x minus the price of y times y. The partial derivative of L with respect to x is alpha times x to the power of alpha minus 1 times y to the power of beta minus lambda times the price of good x. The partial derivative of L with respect to y is beta times x to the power of alpha times y to the power of beta minus 1 minus lambda times the price of good y. The partial derivative of L with respect to lambda is income minus the price of good x times x minus the price of good y times y. Setting them equal to zero yields the first order conditions. Rearranging the first two partial derivatives, we have that alpha times x to the power of alpha minus one times y to the power of beta equals lambda times the price of good x. And beta times x to the power of alpha times y to the power of beta minus one equals lambda times the price of good y. Dividing equation 1 by equation 2 gives us alpha times y over beta times x equals to the price of good x over the price of good y. Solving for the expenditure shares of good y, we have that the price of good y times y equals to beta over alpha times the price of good x times x. Since alpha plus beta equals 1, we have that beta equals to 1 minus alpha. So the expenditure shares of good y equals to 1 minus alpha over alpha times the expenditure shares of good x. Inserting the expenditure shares of good y into the partial derivative of L with respect to lambda, we have that income minus the price of good x times x minus 1 minus alpha over alpha times the price of good x times x equals to 0. Bringing the terms with the expenditure shares of good x to the right hand side, we have that income equals to the price of good x times x plus 1 minus alpha over alpha times the price of good x times x. Factoring out the expenditure shares of good x, we have that income equals to 1 plus 1 minus alpha over alpha times the price of good x times x. Using the common denominator alpha, we have that income equals to alpha plus 1 minus alpha all over alpha times the price of good x times x. Simplifying, we have that income equals to 1 over alpha times the price of good x times x. So income equals to the expenditure shares of good x divided by alpha. Recall that income, alpha, and the price of good x were all given. So we can solve for x, giving us alpha times income over the price of good x. Inserting this into the partial derivative of L with respect to lambda to solve for y, we have that income minus the price of good x times alpha times income over the price of good x minus the price of good y times y equals to zero. 
Simplifying, we have income minus alpha times income minus the price of good y times y equals zero. Bringing the expenditure shares of good y to the right hand side, we have that income minus alpha times income equals to the price of good y times y. Factoring income from the left hand side, we have that one minus alpha times income equals to the price of good y times y. Since alpha plus beta equals one, we have that one minus alpha equals to beta. Solving for y, we have that y equals to beta times income over the price of good y. Now that we have x and y, we can plug it into the partial derivative of L with respect to x to solve for lambda. Moving lambda times the price of good x to the right hand side, we have that alpha times x to the power of alpha minus one times y to the power of beta equals to lambda times the price of good x. Solving for lambda, we have that lambda equals to alpha times x to the power of alpha minus one times y to the power of beta all over the price of good x. So the critical values of L are when x equals to alpha times income over the price of good x, y equals to beta times income over the price of good y, and when lambda equals to alpha times x to the power of alpha minus one times y to the power of beta all over the price of good x. Interpreting the results, we see that an individual whose utility function is given by x to the power of alpha times y to the power of beta will always choose to allocate alpha proportion of his or her income to buying good x, since x equals to alpha times income over the price of good x, and allocate beta proportion to buying good y, since y equals to beta times income over the price of good y. Moreover, Alpha times income and beta times income are the expenditure shares of good x and good y respectively. So an individual spends a fraction alpha of his or her income on good x and a fraction beta on good y, which explains why alpha plus beta must equal to one. The value of the Lagrange multiplier implies that each small change in income will increase utility by approximately lambda of that amount. Let's look at a numerical example. Suppose that good x sells for $1, good y sells for $4, and total income is $8. Suppose that an individual splits his or her income equally between these two goods. Assuming the Cobb-Douglas utility function, solve for the utility maximizing values x and y for the given prices and income. From the given information, we have that alpha and beta are equal to 0 0.5 since income is split equally between the two goods, the price of good x equals to 1, the price of good y equals 4, and income equals 8, giving us the utility function u of x, y equals to x to the power of 0 0.5 times y to the power of 0 0.5, subject to the budget constraint 8 equals to x plus 4y. Setting up the Lagrangian expression, we have that L equals to x to the power of 0 0.5 times y to the power of 0 0.5 plus lambda times 8 minus x minus 4y. The first order conditions are 0 0.5 times x to the power of negative 0 0.5 times y to the power of 0 0.5 minus lambda equals 0. 0 0.5 times x to the power of 0 0.5 times y to the power of negative 0 0.5 minus 4 lambda equals 0 and eight minus x minus four y equals zero. Solving the system of equations, we see that x equals to 0 0.5 times eight over one, which equals to four, y equals to 0 0.5 times eight over four, which equals to one, lambda equals to 0 0.5 times four to the power of negative 0 0.5 times one to the power of 0 0.5 all over one, which equals to 0 0.25, and utility equals to four to the power of 0 0.5 times one to the power of 0 0.5, which equals to two. Therefore, the utility maximizing values are x equals four and y equals one, with a maximum utility of two. The Lagrange multiplier implies that a small change in income will increase utility by approximately one quarter of that amount. Here's an exercise that you can try. Make sure that you pause the video before you check your solution. Good luck.